My name is Trudy Nelson and I'm the Aboriginal Resource Teacher for School District 73. And today I'm going to be sharing a few different ways that you can preserve and prepare uh, traditional medicinal plants from the territory that we are working in today, which is the Shaquat Kulu. And I'm very lucky to have my colleague and friend uh, working with me today. I'll let him introduce himself. Like uh, Kwaitep, Kenton Thomas Kiskwes. Yeah, so I'll be uh, assisting Trudy today and uh, talking a little bit about the plants and uh, also introducing to you, to those of you who haven't been introduced yet, to uh, our plant knowledge cards that were developed in coordination with uh, Libby Chisholm from Salmon Arm, Sorrento area, myself, and uh, a bunch of knowledge keepers from uh, the Sequoia Kukulu. So, very, very happy to be here to help out Trudy today. My dogs. <laughs> <And he's... laughs> okay, so first of all, I'll just quickly go over, and I want this video to be more than a half an hour because I don't want people to lose interest, but I want to cover as many things as we can um, in a half an hour or less. So what we're going to be doing is um, making some teas, which uh, involves drying plants, uh, and we're going to be making a salve, which involves um, boiling up some oil that I've been infusing for six weeks. And we're going to be bottling up some tinctures uh, from some plants that I have had infusing in food grade alcohol for six weeks. So those are the three goals that we have today. Um, we're going to be look, uh, we're going to be using, and Kenta will go over the uses of the plants when I'm cooking up the oil, um, wild rose, Arnica, so this is ready right now. Um, it's just about to be finished. So if you're um, if you're interested in going out and harvesting it, uh, it's ready now, which is we are what, just about the middle of June. So depending on where you are, but in the Shakot Mkulu, higher or lower, um, it's going to be either you know just finishing or just almost finishing. So that's Arnica, and we just wanted to show you the difference between Arnica and balsam root because they're both a type of sunflower, but they're different. And they have different purposes. So um, uh, he'll get into that. And then we have yarrow, which um, is the whole thing from the from the stems up is medicinal, but it's more of an internal um, medicine. So I'm not going to be steeping it in oil or anything. I'm just going to be drawing it for tea. So Kenton is going to be chipping up the um, also Husham stems. Uh, I've gathered two different kinds. So there's male and female soapberry um, plants and they have to uh, grow together in order to produce the berries. So uh, probably won't be able to see, but so the males don't have the berries, but I got a female, two female branches and they're just starting to show their tiny little berries. Um, and they are usually ready in this area, up in the mountains where I get them, uh, end of June, beginning of July. So I'm gonna strain my oil into my pot to make the, the salve. And while I'm doing that, he is going to chip up the the, the rose and the, um, cotton, uh, the rose and the soapberry or husham branches. So, go ahead. Okay, okay. So I'm just going to strain this cottonwood oil that I've had in few Okay, I'm It smells so fresh. So, so what we want to do with the the chipped up stems and leaves, um, and and we can use the whole stem with the leaves and the little berries, 
um, because the whole plant is um, edible or medicinal. So um, there's no part of it that we can't eat or put inside of our bodies. These are cottonwood buds. So this is actually, yes, yes. So this is cottonwood buds that I had infusing in a jar like this, and I strained the buds out, which then beca this becomes the dross, but there's still medicine in there. You can smell it, and they're still kind of sticky, even after six weeks or longer that I had them sleeping. So I'm drying them now because they really go well um, in tea. They're really good for the lungs, which reminds me, I always get to make tea. When I'm cooking up, so beautiful. So now we're just going to kind of mix that around every day until it's nice and dry, and then basically put it in a nice jar like this. Put it by your stove, and then I always have my kettle ready, and I just put a handful of that into my kettle. Mix, mix with different plants that you like. So in this kettle today, I have rose stems, silkberry stems, and cottonwood buds. So Kevin and I are going to drink some tea. Okay, um, so I'm going to get him to put um, as many as he can into this little jar, and then I like to have that by my, um, my stove, like I said. Okay, so I've got this all strained. I'm going to start simmering it on the um, stove and warming it up, and then I'm going to add uh, beeswax to it. To turn it into a salve, which I'll show you. So this is uh, essentially what the salve looks like. The medicine that is a topical um, ointment for whatever. This one is an evergreen mix, which I have one ready to go. Uh, juniper, pine, and Douglas fir. And it ends up being this beautiful, rich green salve um, after the beeswax is added to it and cooked into it and poured into the jars. I get these jars from the Dollarama and they're perfect size for um, just giving out and sharing with people. Okay, so I'm getting this warmed up. And then while that warms up, I'll show you how I strain my, it's called a menstruum. All the plants in this jar, as I said, the juniper, evergreen, and Douglas fir, are now in a menstruum of oil. You can make menstruums using different um, liquids. So I use olive oil for my salves, and I use vodka for my tinctures, and I use Ribena for Things like cough syrups for kids, which is uh, black currant juice. Okay, so this is how I strain the uh, the menstruum or the dross, the plant that now has no medicine left in it, out of the oil. I just have these jars, can you see? And then I just flip it, and then it strains right into the jar, and I'll sometimes just leave that to drain and strain overnight. So, and then later I'll make this into a salve, but not today. Okay, so, while I'm cooking the salve up, maybe you can talk a little bit about the plants that we have today okay. and their uses. Okay. Thank you. So, the first one that we did, we did the, we did the, the ground, the grinding of the soup lally. And uh, this is from the cards that we did. So um, we call it, we, where I'm from, we call them Husham. And the habitat, the habitat that they, they, that they come from is common throughout the interior plateau. Grows in moist and dry locations in open forests and clearings at low to south alpine elevations. So some of the knowledge that we do have for it is it's a well-known food and medicinal plant. It's a really good um, blood thinner. The bright red berries are harvested in the mid to late summer by beating them off the branches. So you sit there and beat them off. And a lot of people use either an umbrella or a little blanket underneath to capture the berries. 
and uh, um, or we you can break off the branches or by pruning the bush. Uh, a lot of times periodic burnings keep the bushes healthy and, they, and it helps to spread the seeds. The sweetened juice, which is high in vitamin C and iron, can be whipped into a dessert known as Indian ice cream. And that's one of my that's one of my favorite things to do. I tell the kids I'm gonna I'm gonna whip up some ice cream, oh, yeah. and then they uh, they get there and then they they go oh yeah so ice cream, <laughs> and then you whip it up and it gets a big foam and then you serve it out in little cups and then you watch the kids and they're all excited and then they bite into it and they go oh it's bitter oh, bitter berry. Um, less ripe green berries make a less bitter dessert. The foam is used as the foam was also known to be used as a shampoo. Um, it plant and restoration science, so it attracts native bees, grizzlies, and black bears. Roots well, can are, I see something about the, the bears? My, so I just learned that if you actually take the bear scat, I guess it's called, right? Uh, you can take fresh bear scat, which I've come across, like literally steaming bear poop in a mushroom grove, and um, it was scary. But uh, you can take it and plant it in your backyard and have all different kinds of berries and plants growing in your yard um, from the bear poop because they eat so many different seeds of garage. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You have your own traditional garden. Um, the roots are nitrogen fixing, helping other plants access this much valued nutrient. Because of this, Supalali also tolerates poor soils. Berries contain glucoside saponin, which foams when whipped. That's grown from cuttings, but can also be grown from seed after putting seeds through a blender and cold stratifying. So this, this is the fun fact. The sequent name for the Shushop Delta and Salmon River, River Valley on Shushop, Shushop Lake is known as, and I cannot say it, I'll say the anglicized version, version which is Switzmalt, or Supalali, and it means a Supalali bush. This was a well-known and harvesting site for the salmon and berries, Supalali in particular. So that was Switzmalt, otherwise known as Salmon Arm. That's where I'm from. Okay, so I've got these um, tinctures that I've had soaking for about six weeks. So I have balsam root, which was this flower. Uh, that's pretty much done now, but the root of that, uh, which is very medicinal, um, I dug it out, I chopped it up, I put it into uh, food grade alcohol. Uh, and now I'm going to strain it out. I'm going to see if I can turn it right down. Okay. And is it is all the beeswax melted? So I put a few yeah. ounces of beeswax in there. Oh, it's um, almost melted. Yeah, so we could turn it right down. Okay. Even like to low, low, low. Yeah. And I will pour that out in a minute. Let's get it ready. Okay, so I've got this mini strainer for this little um, jar. And I'm going to take the, the dross out of the medicine now. So I'm going to pour this carefully. And so this is balsam root tincture. So balsam root is really good for the lungs. Um, well, I'll let Kenton, we didn't talk about that one yet, did we? No, I'll let Kenton talk about that while I'm getting okay. this. Okay, so again, I'm going back to the cards. And again, these were, uh, you can order these actually from uh, the Scotland Education Centre. The Scotland Education Centre, and they have a website. You can look at the Scotland Education Centre website, and they'll have the order forms for these cards. But uh, these are the balsam roots, and their habitat is uh, hot and hot, arid parts of the interior plateau on open, dry hillsides, meadows, shrublands, and forests in low to high elevations. So some of the knowledge that was shared with us with the knowledge keepers that when we developed these cards were important medicine and food plant, also known as sunflower. All parts of this plant are edible. The roots are pit cooked over two or three days. Sometimes they're boiled on the stove or even oven baked. And the seeds are dried and used as flour. Tap roots are dug from March to April 
just as leaves begin to show, and in April and May, the bud stems are gathered, tasting like the nutty sunflower seeds. Only the carrot sized daughter roots, having three to five flower heads, are harvested. The larger mother roots are left to grow and produce seeds. Soil would cover the seeds during the harvest to grow into new plants. Plants are enhanced by periodic burning. Overgrazing by domestic sheep has impacted the populations. Plant and restoration science. Deep taproot makes them well adapted to, to thriving in dry conditions. Common food for deer and elk. So if you see a lot of them, you might get a good chance of seeing a deer and elk. Does not transplant well and is best propagated from seed. The fun fact for the, for the balsam root is that pit, pit cooking breaks down the, the I think, inulin and fruit, uh, the insulin and fructose, making the roots tastier and more easily digestible. The tap root has a characteristic balsam pitch aroma. Oh yeah, the, the root has like, the bark is so thick and it's got sap, but what I read is that you need to get those roots before they start to blossom because then all that energy, all that sap goes up into the blossom. So if you really want that really strong root with all the sap, you got to get it early in yeah. the spring, yeah, before they start to, like that. So, so that's balsam root. So, so I got three, they're 50 mil jars of balsam root tincture, and I'm going to label them. I have little stickies, but I just don't have them out right now. So I will label them, but just to be sure, I don't forget. And really, labeling is the most important thing because you will absolutely 100% forget what is what if you don't have a label. Because once you get plants into their jars, you won't be able to decipher certain ones from others. So this is balsam root. But all this uh, preparation to make these foods and medicines and that um, reminds me of a story. There's a story about uh, how spider taught man to fish. And in the beginning of the story, this it talks about how man followed uh, followed the animals around and watched what they ate when he first arrived. When he was the Tekalmuk, the people to come, and then he arrived, he was the Kalmuk. And he was walking around and he's watching the deers and the elk and all the other animals and what they eat. And sometimes, as the story says, sometimes he's able to grab some of that food and eat it. And it tasted good and he was, it was easily digestible for him. But other times, he would grab the very same food that they ate, like the kinkeknum, the bear, or, or uh, uh, the cheat, the deer. And he would eat the very same thing that they ate and it wouldn't digest through his system. And in the story, as I as I as I learned it, it was because he had not yet learned how to prepare that food in a way. So he would have to wait until you know such things as fire came along and cooking vessels until he figured out how to create the vessels for which he needed to cook, such as jars and stoves and fire and all of that, until he could properly properly process this food. And that's right in the story. So the preparation of the food, as, it, as, it, as told in the stories, is very, I guess, almost sacred and, and, uh, and a really good thing that should be honored and, and taken into consideration every time you're preparing this food, as the stories tell us. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up and, because we're preparing foods and medicines today. and it, It's told right in the stories. It is important to, and again, like of course, making an offering before you take from the land and being thankful and, and explaining to the plant uh, when you're making your offering of tobacco or even water, um, just something to show that you appreciate. Uh, telling the plant what you're going to do with it, who you're going to use it for, who you're going to share it with, mm -hmm. what its purpose will be, uh, actually helps the plant to shut itself down and give itself to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when we're doing the knowledge uh, collecting for these cards, myself and Libby, one of the knowledge keepers mentioned that uh, the collection of medicines and the foods is a very important thing. And when you when you acknowledge that and you're mindful of that that whole process, it comes across in a good and kind way. Yeah. But she. 
this this lady she really takes care of her her body and her her mind and her spirit so she's always wary of who gives her food and who gives her medicines because she always is under the belief that if you're doing it not in a good and kind way and mindful about the collection or the harvesting of the medicines or the foods and you're just doing it say you're you're out drinking a little stat and driving around in the bush having fun with your buddies and you you catch yourself a harvest yourself a deer and you bring her some, she'll take that into consideration and she'll, uh, she'll, she'll use that food in a different way. So things like that are uh, really, the harvesting is a really important part of the entire process to bring to, to complete that cycle of, uh, of uh, life. So what I did, I just melted down that beeswax in the oil. You can see the beautiful color of the cottonwood oil amber and it's got such a beautiful um, scent and it's really good for inflammation it's really good for uh, skin like conditions um, so this is all topical obviously so again the cottonwood bud is good for the top topical and uh, external and internal so that's why I've saved all those cottonwood buds that I strained out so this will cool and it will harden and it will end up like this so I'll just let that, oh yeah, so now I have my jar of cottonwood buds ready to put into my, um, to put into my tea. And so this is, this leftover plant is just called the dross, and I can give that back to the land. So I won't do the other two that I have, because you just saw how that was processed. But after we're done, I'll do my cottonwood stems and my soapberry stems into tincture. Okay. Now, what else did I want to do? So the Arnica, did we talk about the Arnica? No, but we don't have a card for that, so you'll have to oh, right. share so, your knowledge with us on this. Okay, so Arnica is just really good for healing wounds, bruises. I use it for my skin. It actually is good for um, eczema, for, for people. Um, even if you put a compress on like a broken bone, it helps heal broken bones. Um, what else? Uh, muscle aches, joint pain, so um, the to a tonic is good for the heart, so just another really valuable plant. Yeah, one of my friends, uh, she just uh, went through a, a cancer treatment and she used a lot of Arnica to help with the pain and the inflammation and uh, she really swore by it and she it really helped with uh, especially the pain, the pain of a uh, the surgery and the treatment so arnica truly is beneficial to yeah. uh, to pain and to pain relief yeah and mm -hmm. another one for pain relief is the yarrow so this is also depending on how high or the elevation that you're you're harvesting at ready right now i love the smell of it so as i said the stem and the flowers can be used and the leaves so the leaves are really good so about uh, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks ago, I harvested just all the fresh leaves that are that were coming out and put them into an oil, so after a yarrow salve, and then I dried uh, a whole bunch of the leaves for yarrow tea because it is good for pain, it is good for cramps, it is good for stomach pains, it is good for... Um, for toothaches, you can make a poultice, chew it up, and just put it right on a, on a toothache, or you could even use like the, the oily salve and just put it on there. But I wanted to just make this into a tea, so I'll do the same thing. I'll just stick it into a jar and have it by my, my sink. I actually need like a whole shelf built that has yeah. space for all, <laughs> all my concoctions, because I've got them all over the place. Um, but the arnica, okay, so I've got the tea for the yarrow, and then I forgot to show you this too. So this is um, the arnica that I have in olive oil. We got this last Friday, yeah. so this will be ready in about five weeks to make some salve. And uh, I just really like to give it out, share it with friends and family, and it's just my way of giving back and showing love and caring about the people um, that I care about. So that's that. Okay, what are we at? Oh, 24 minutes. So we didn't want to go past a half an hour, so I'll just quickly kind of wrap up. We did tea. We showed you the, how to chip the tea up, but if you don't have a chipper, you can cut, 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 cut. 
it's just easier and I've got the yard chipper. So we did the T, that's going to be drying for, it doesn't take long for the, that chipped up stems and leaves to dry. Uh, and then we did the salve, so that was the steeped oil for six weeks mixed with beeswax, melted and poured into small jars, label, label, label. And then we did the tincture, which is the um, plants infused in a mix, I should share with you, a mix of, for the tincture, one third of the jar is the plant, one third of the jar is the food grade alcohol, and one third of the jar is water. So a third, a third, a third um, steeps the tincture. And as I said, those are going to be ready to go. And then we did, I have some Kinnikinnik here too, if you want to share, because Kinnikinnik is ready right now as well. Mm -hmm. So I think we had a card on Kinnikinnik. Yes, we did. And we did the Supalali, and we did the balsam root, and oh, and, the rose. and then you can talk about the wild rose, which we are drying, and then we're done. Okay, so this is the Kinnikinnik, and again, this is from the knowledge cards. So the habitat is dry forest clearings and exposed, often rocky slopes with well-drained or sandy soils from low to alpine elevations. The knowledge that we collected from the elders were the berries are harvested from late summer well into the winter. They're eaten raw, fried in salmon oil or bear fat, mm, or cooked in soups with deer, moose, or salmon meat. Raw berries tended to be quite draw, dry and not valued like other berries. Considered more of a winter or famine food. Leaves are used as both a tobacco and a medicine. They are also known to be foods for wildlife, including grouse and bear. So some of the signs behind this is Kinnikinnik is an alternate host for, for spruce, spruce broom rust, a fungal plant disease that can deform, reduce growth and cause, cause tree mortality. They are known to be an indicator of nutrient poor dry soils. That's interesting. Can be propagated by seed or vegetative cutting. Seeds are collected between August and October macerated and requires sulfuric acid scarification treatment before cold scarification. That is way beyond my knowledge. Fun fact, the, la the word kaniknik came from Yunami Lenape word for mixture. These berries feature in the Sequaknik coyote story, coyote juggles his eyeballs. <laughs> Okay, so we are, we've covered a few awesome plants that are ready right now and um, stay tuned and hopefully we'll be doing another video with some plants, maybe before the end of June, see what else pops up out of the ground in this uh, ground in this beautiful um, territory that we live, work and play on the Shikoti Coulee. So thanks for tuning in and we see you later. Uh -huh.